Welcome to Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. It's Sunday. We're getting ready to cap off what's been another exciting week of racing here at Gulfstream. And what better way to do it than with a Rainbow Six carryover of more than $300,000. It's going to go way above four hundred, dollars maybe even $500,000 today. So let's get right to it. I know you want to see how that ends up. Here are the track and weather conditions for today's card. We've got a fast main track and a firm turf course this Sunday afternoon. The first race on the card is a $16,000 claimer. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or which have not won a race since February 23rd, or three-year-olds will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the four, June Flower. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Trio of Mischief begins nicely. Wove is showing speed, and toward the rail, it's up Trumpet's Eminence, who makes it a party, and now it's Wove, who's going to cross and clear Trumpet's Eminence in the run to the turn. Trio of Mischief is away racing in third. Oxendine is wide on the course. Pure crazy luck between horses. Little Miss Smarty K rides the rail, and also in that back flight is Moonlight Matinee. They take it to the far turn, and on top of the field, it's Wove by three lengths. Moonlight Matinee with a nifty move on the inside saves all the ground, and into second now from Trio of Mischief is three wide. Pure Crazy Luck will have to circle four wide. And in between horses, it's Trumpet's Eminence. They went 21-3 and three for an opening quarter, and they're at the top of the stretch. Moonlight, Matinee, and Jonathan Gonzalez have rode the rail to the lead. Trio of Mischief floated out in Pure Crazy Luck. Ducks between horses. Final furlong. Here comes Trio of Mischief on the outside. Moonlight, Matinee tries to stave her off. Back third, Pure Crazy Luck. Moonlight, Matinee has the lead. Moonlight, Matinee in front. Trio of Mischief ran second in front of Pure Crazy Luck third. Close fourth, give it to Oxendine in 56 and one. Moonlight Matinee holds off Trio of Mischief to take the first race. Jonathan Gonzalez was in the irons for trainer Monty Thomas and owners Ups and Downs Racing. Moonlight Matinee returned $6.20 for her victory. That'll bring us right to the second race, the $6,250 claimer. Three-year-olds and up will be going a mile and a 16th on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. They're up. From the outside, Bluegrass Jam has hustled out to take the lead. Scorpion Time showing speed, and Commander Tate moves to the leader on the outside. It will be Commander Tate who's on the offensive to take the lead from Bluegrass Jam, who's right alongside second. Scorpion Time saves ground with Miles Moore in the two path, two better than the gray ludicrous speed. Followed by Sir Sparky, who's two in front of Burning Time, and along the inside, Siravastar is at the back of the pack. They race around the opening turn with Bluegrass Jam on the inside ahead in front. Up on the outside, Commander Tate second through an opening quarter in 24 and 2. Scorpion Time is now third toward the inside. And then from between them, it's Ludicrous Speed. Three wide miles more. Sir Sparky is behind the top flight horses. He's positioned about four lengths off the lead. He's four lengths better than Burning Time, and it's another four to the trailer. The trailer is Sarava Star. They take it down the back stretch now and approach the half mile mark. On top, it's Bluegrass Jam by a half and 48 and 2. Getting a crack on the shoulder is Commander Tate to try to stay close in second. Pocketed up third is Scorpion Time, then it's the gray Ludicrous Speed. Sir Sparky is sent wide from between them, it's Miles Moore. Burning Time is trying to catch that top flight, and Sarava Star is last. Around the far turn, less than three furlongs to run, and on top, it's Bluegrass Jam in front by four now. Commander Tate is second, Scorpion Time third. Only horse doing any work from the back is Burning Time. He swings wide for the drive under Sonny Leone. He's within four lengths of the lead as they run to the top of the stretch. It works a less than a quarter of a mile to go, and Bluegrass Jam went three quarters and one third. 13 and 2. He'll have to deal with Burning Time, who's under a full head of steam on the outside. Into the short stretch, but Burning Time has the momentum on the outside. He takes over from Bluegrass Jam, who's back to second, then Scorpion Time third. But in deep stretch, it will be Burning Time and Sonny Leone to move away. Burning Time is a three length winner. Second is Bluegrass Jam, Scorpion Time third, and Sir Sparky's in a photo for fourth with from between horses Commander Tate. They went 145 and 3 for the running time. Burning Time runs down Bluegrass Jam to take the second race. Sonny Leone was aboard for trainer Oscar Gonzalez and owners OMG Stables, LLC. Burning Time paid $20.20 to win. Shaman goes down the outside. Shaman goes chasing Danish Dynaformer. Danish Dynaformer. Shaman Ghost and Shaman Ghost takes the Queen's Plate a length. And taking the 156th running of the Queen's Plate is Shaman Ghost, beautifully bred by Ghost Zephyr, 
Classic Bloodlines, Classic Sire, Ghost Sapper, standing at Adina Springs. Race number three is an $8,000 claimer. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won a race since February 23rd of this year, will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. A field of eight will go to the post. They're off. Level beginning. From the inside, Starship Gambler will reach out to take the lead from another Smokey who's away racing second. Miss Pow Wow is out of their third, and Chloe Carroll moving up on the outside. Followed by She's the Cat, two better than Go Ron Tos Go. Along the inside, it's Roll Baby, and trailing the field early is Gigi's Miracle. They circle the first turn, and Starship Gambler has the lead for Octavio Vergara Jr., leads it by two lengths now. Racing in second is another Smokey with Chloe Carroll on the outside. These top three have gone five better than Miss Pow Wow, taken in hand to be fourth. Go Rontos Go is three wide. From between them, it's She's the Cat. Stretch of another four to Roll Baby, a length better than Gigi's Miracle. Strung out over about 17 lengths in the run to the back stretch. They went 23 and four for the opening quarter speed. And still on top at Starship Gambler, three parts of a length. Three wide is Chloe Carroll. Another Smokey tries to keep her spot between horses. They're five better than an outside running Go Rontos Go along the inside, Miss Pow Wow. Then she's the cat, and the two back markers continue to be the Grays, Gigi's Miracle and Roll Baby. They went 47 and 1 for an opening half mile, and Starship Gambler continues to find up top. Chloe Carroll is there second. They've put three now, another Smokey who's now third. Miss Pow Wow trying to uncork from fourth. Then go Rontos Go, and she's the cat trying to run on from the back is Gigi's Miracle and Roll Baby yet to be heard from after three quarters and 111 and 2. They run to the top of the stretch. Starship Gambler on the inside, Chloe Carroll on the outside. They arrive at the top of the stretch, two and a half lengths better than Miss Pow Wow third. She's the Cat is next, and Gigi's Miracle. Eighth of a mile to go. Starship Gambler has something in reserve and boots away. Chloe Carroll is second. Miss Pow Wow and She's the Cat battle it out third and fourth. Starship Gambler, coast to coast. Chloe Carroll second, Miss Pow Wow third. Starship Gambler cannot be caught in the third race. She relishes a return to South Florida and wins her first start back for trainer David Fox. Octavio Vergara Jr. was the winning rider. David Fox is the winning trainer. The winning owners, Treblana Stable. Starship Gambler paid $4.40 to win. On to the fourth race now. This is a starter allowance. Three-year-olds and up will be sprinting six and a half furlongs on the main track. Scratch the one and the two. They're off. From the outside, Captain Taves wins the start. Moving up on the inside, it's running cat and splitting horses now. His Masterado is the run down the backstretch. There's no pace on at all. Three horses across the track now, and ahead in front is running cat. From between them, Captain Taves. Three wide out there is Janino, followed by Sportsbook. And up the inside lane, the trailer is Masterado. Now Cotto Jr. and Running Cat shake free a bit here. They lead it by two with less than five furlongs to go. They went 23 seconds flat for the opening quarter. Captain Taves is there second. Masterado is glued to the inside. He's now third from Janino and out wide is Sportsbook improving. He's two lengths behind. They run around the far turn. Running Cat has the lead by a length and a quarter. Three wide out there is Sportsbook. Trying to run on from the back and on the inside is Masterado. Then Janino and Captain Taves is the first to call it an afternoon as they run to the top of the stretch. They went 45-3 and three for an opening half mile. Masterado working off the fence to try to get to Running Cat. Sportsbook has plotted a wide course. Then Janino, top of the lane. Running Cat still has the lead. Masterado into the clear now and he has the lead now. Back to second is Running Cat. Sportsbook is third with Janino and Captain Taves. Final furlong. Running Cat coming back at Masterado. Masterado's in front. Running Cat will come back at him one more time. Running Cat. Masterado. Masterado. Running Cat. Photo finish. Too close to call on the money between Running Cat and Masterado. 117 and 1. Masterado just gets the nod in a close photo with Running Cat to take the fourth race. Luca Panici was your winning jockey for trainer Leo Gabriel Jr. and owner Harry Camadeca. Mascherato paid $5.40 to win. The fifth race is a $6,250 claimer. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the main track. A field of eight will go to the post. They're up. Wall Street Kitten from the outside was away well. Down to the inside, Sub Midnight Star is showing speed and moving between horses is T-minus to mix it up. These are the three quickest in the run out of the one-mile shoot. It will be T-minus to take up the running from the inside. Sub Midnight Star second, Wall Street Kitten is third, Ben Jacob is now fourth. 
From the rail, it's just for fun on hold while fifth. He's only about three behind. He's a length better than Deputy Vic, then to the outside, Mr. Fahrenheit, and Power will have to do it from last. After the opening quarter went in 24 seconds, there are four horses across the racetrack. Some Midnight Star and Harry Hernandez with inside position, they lead it a half a length. Three wide is Wall Street Kitten, and the two path is T-minus. Four wide is Ben Jacob, then it's a length and a half to Just for Fun. He's uh, comfortable while fifth, and he's about four behind the leader now. Stretch of another three to Mr. Fahrenheit, then Deputy Vic, and Power. They make their way to the far turn. They went 47 seconds flat for the opening half mile speed. Some Midnight Star continues to lead it. Wall Street Kitten is wide on the outside. T-minus is scrubbed along just for fun. Has had a cozy run of it. He's down to the inside for Gaffleone. He's moving into a joint second at the 5 16 Needs a little racing room. Mr. Fahrenheit moves from the outside. He's wide on the course. They run to the top of the stretch. Three quarters, 112 and 2. Into the stretch with some Midnight Star still in front. Ben Jacob to the attack on the outside and up the fence. Here's just for fun. On the far outside, Wall Street Kitten is back forth. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Far outside, it's Ben Jacob who moves to the front at 13 to 1. Just for fun tries to kick with him on the inside. 16th pole, just for fun. Ben Jacob, Ben Jacob short lead. Ben Jacob the winner. Ben Jacob gets up to take the fifth race on today's program. Josie Gomez was aboard for trainer David Rakoff and owner Golden Age Stable. Ben Jacob paid $29.20 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. On to the sixth race now, a $6,250 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up will be sprinting five and a half furlongs on the main track. And they're up. Stonejack was off a step slow. From the inside, that's Time's Concern and Profire who both begin nicely. Here's Pecorino moving up on the outside. He's three wide while third. Blue, blue, bluegrass Derby is now in fourth with Potichon toward the inside fifth. Stonejack is moving up in traffic there with JC50 on the outside. And Favorite Uncle in the comeback run is last of all and about nine lengths off the lead. They run around the far turn, chasing the veteran Times Concern, who throttles open to lead it by two. Pecorino's a joint second alongside Profire, running on from the outside, JC50. In traffic, both Bluegrass Derby and Stonejack. Three and a half lengths back to the rail, that's Potichon, and Favorite Uncle continues last. They pass the quarter mile pole, Times Concern trying to spring the upset. Pecorino moves to him while second, JC50 is now third. From the outside, Bluegrass Derby swings wide for the drive. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Pecorino up for a short lead. Back to second is Times Concern from the far outside Bluegrass Derby. Late run between them from Potichon, but in deep stretch, he's undefeated at Gulfstream. He's Pecorino, and he's three on top. Times Concern second, Bluegrass Derby third, and Profire was fourth at 104 flat. Pecorino kicks clear to take the sixth race in the opening leg of today's Rainbow Six. Harry Hernandez was aboard for trainer Jenna Antonucci and owners drawing away stable. Pecorino returned $3.20 to win. On to race number seven, an allowance with an optional claiming tag of $25,000. Three-year-olds and up will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. They're up. From the center rail, Botas and Moonshine Sipper begin the best toward the rail. Run for the Woods is showing speed. Also coming away in the top flight is Starship Sulu. And from between them, Little Baker. It's a stretch of two lengths back to the outside. Sylvan Park followed by Rock'em Again. And Rock'em Again to inside is Big Distinction, who's near the back of the pack with Woo Pass. They take it around the far turn. On the inside, it's Moonshine Sipper by a neck. Right alongside Starship Sulu, second. They're pouring on the speed. They're three lengths better than Little Baker, who's now third. El Botas wide while fourth toward the rail. 
trail and run for the woods. A length and a half better than Sylvan Park. He's the favorite, and he's starting to get in gear as they drilled a quarter in 21 and 1, and they run for home. Toward the inside, Moonshine Sipper, Sarsip Sulu on the outside, and off cover. Here's El Bota swinging into action for Eddie Dominguez, and Sylvan Park is widest of all, and coming on. Sylvan Park down the center trying to get to Moonshine Sipper and El Botas, but Sylvan Park going two to their one late. Sylvan Park and El Botas, El Botas, Star Sylvan Park. Photo finish maybe outside to Sylvan Park from El Botas and Moonshine Sipper and 55 and two. Sylvan Park gets up in the final jump to take the seventh race. Tyler Gaffleone was aboard for trainer Tevis McCauley. He also owns a portion of this colt with Nathan McCauley. Sylvan Park returned $6.80 for his victory. Race number eight is a $25 to $30,000 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the five, Royal Seer. And they're up. From the center, Primal Might gets the first call toward the rail. That's Niche and Diabolical IPA from the top shelf comes away with speed. The favorite roster rant is taken in hand with Bold Summit moving up on the outside. And the early trailer is Fastidious Sun, but he's only about three lengths behind. Down the backstretch they go, and Bold Summit finds his feet and puts ahead in front. Primal Might is right back at him from the inside. Second, Niche is now third. Racing in fourth is the gray Diabolical IPA, followed by Fastidious Sun, and the favorite, Rosterant, is last of all as they take it around the far turn. They went 22-4 and four for the opening quarter speed, and Bold Summit now released by a length and a quarter. From the outside, Niche is into second from Primal Might third. Winding it up from the back is Fastidious Sun. He was fifth. He's now fourth, now third, and making a bid toward the lead. Rosterant held up in traffic. He'll need some place to go. He's only three lengths from the pace as they're at the top of the stretch. Niche just ran up the Take the lead, Fastidious Sun into the clear for Jaramillo, and Rosterant still loaded, no place to go. Diabolical IPA is on the outside, and there's an eighth of a mile to go. It's Niche on top. Rosterant has room inside. Does he have enough time? Niche almost there. Rosterant on the inside. Niche, Rosterant, Niche in front. Rosterant second, desperately close for third, either Fastidious Sun or Diabolical IPA in 110. And two. Niche gets the victory in the eighth race. Eddie Castro was your winning rider for trainer Larry Pilati and owners Monarch Stables, Inc. Niche made $6.20 to win. Race number nine is one of two maiden special weights for two-year-old fillies today. In this one, they'll be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. A full field of 11 will go to the post. They're up. Poor beginnings for High Heeled Golden Mila and Miss Niagara. It was a quick beginning for more royalty, and the favorite's already a length on top. Here's Monos moving up on the outside to be second from Talitha Coom, who's now third. Racing in fourth is Mai Martina. She spotted about five behind. She's three better than Eskin Lady. Will be magical to the inside. That's a half length back. Moving out wide is High Heeled. It's a stretch of three to Golden Mila. Miss Niagara rides the rail. Second last is Ace of Hearts, and Rara is last of all, as it's still more royalty who's in front, but the lead has dwindled. Now Monos issues the challenge on the outside. They're three better than Talitha Coombe, who's now third, five in front of My Martina and Eskin Lady, and they run to the top of the stretch. The heavy hitters in the wage ring are one, two, more royalty off the top of the turn on top. Monos to the attack, second back third, Talitha Coombe, three and a half lengths to Eskin Lady and high heels up the inside. Final furlong, more royalty, extends the lead now to three. Monos did her best, but her best was second best to more royalty. Who's the winner? Monos is second, will be magical third in front of Eskin Lady fourth in 56 and four. More royalty runs them off their feet in the ninth race, breaking her maiden in her career debut for trainer Ralph Nix and owner Donald R. Disney. More royalty was ridden to victory by Tyler Gaffleone, who notched his second win of the day. This two-year-old filly paid $3.60 to win.
Welcome back. Let's get to the final two races of the week. The 10th is the second of our maiden special weights today for two-year-old fillies. They'll be sprinting five furlongs on the main track. A field of 11 will go to the post. They're up. From the inside, Anna's pride is quickly away and establishes the lead early on from above fashion, who's away racing in second. Kissos is out of there racing in third in front of Make Yourself at Home. And up on the outside, it's Chief Attraction, followed by Sweet Point. Wide on the course and improving now is Marnesia Big Girl. Splitting horses is She Takes Heart. As they take it around the far turn, it's a stretch of another four to Didn't Mean It. And Apache Queen is last as they run around the far turn. Anna's pride leads, but only by an act. Kissos moves up on the outside second. Chief Attraction is now third. Third. Above fashion, the favorite is fourth behind the speed, and she's four lengths better than she takes heart and make yourself at home. Followed by Did Not Mean It and Marnesia Big Girl toward the inside. That sultry town cat and they're at the top of the stretch. On the inside, Anna's Pride is still the leader, but Mommy of Rail, it's above fashion who got through. Down the center and kiss us. These three to settle the score. On top, Anna's Pride digging in gamely. Above fashion on the inside, down the outside and kiss us. In deep stretch, here's above fashion scooting through. Above Fashion in the final stride nailed Anna's Pride in 58 and 3. Above Fashion gets up along the rail to take the 10th race. A very skillful ride here by Amisael Jaramillo. The winning trainer, Rashan Creaky. The winning owners, Alexandra Racing Stable, LLC. Above Fashion paid $4.40 to win. The final race of the week, the Sunday finale, is an $8,000 claiming event. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the 11, 13, 14, and 15. And runners away. Starship Trouble was a step slow. Another grand slam wins the start and will establish the lead from the outside Go Sandy Go and Alien Queen come away in the top flight. Mucho Media and Melora is going to take the worst of that. She's about six wide in the run to the first turn. Saving Ground has stacked the crown two and a half in front of Starship Trouble. Three wide through the initial stages. Princess Romana, New York Jackie is between horses. Second last is Redwater and the early trailer is Polo is cheaper. They bend into the backstretch, four horses across the racetrack. Melora is widest of all, and down to the inside, it's another grand slam. Pressing the issue is on the outside to Alien Queen, and go Sandy, go. We rain back now. She'll run fourth, two and a half in front of Stack the Crown. Then Mucho Media and Starship Trouble. New York Jackie, widest of all. Stretch of two lengths to Princess Romana, and the two trailers are Redwater and Polo is cheaper. They carved a quarter in a contested 23 and 3. There's less than half a mile to go. Up on the outside, Melora is now up to challenge Alien Queen for the lead. Ridden hard from the inside, another Grand Slam tries to stay on. They went 46 and 4 for a half mile split and stacked the crown, raping in the fast pace now, starting to tighten in from fourth. Two better than New York Jackie. She's wide, but she's moving up. Then it's a gap to go Sandy Go, followed by Starship Trouble and Princess Romana, and they run to the top of the stretch. Now trying to get through Gaffleone with an inside running. Stack the crown. Stack the crown does sneak through there, and Stack the crown's up for the lead. Back to second is Alien Queen, but she's right alongside. Melora's three wide and coming again. Then it's another Grand Slam in New York Jackie. In deep stretch, Stack the Crown, hard ridden but holding firm. Alien Queen is second. Stack the Crown to get the job done. Close then for second, either New York Jackie or Alien Queen. Melora is fourth. There's another photo for fifth between Princess Romana and Redwater to complete the high five. Stack the Crown gets the win in the 11th race. Tyler Gaffleone was aboard. That's his third win of the day. The winning owner and trainer, Sandy Cataldi. Stack the Crown paid $10 to win. And here's how our exotic wagers paid today. The pick four, four of four, thirty-eight dollars and thirty cents. The pick five, five of five, one hundred twenty-nine dollars and eighty-five cents. The rainbow six, six of six, two hundred eighty-one dollars and thirty-six cents. There will be a pretty big carryover heading into Thursday's card. It stands at three hundred ninety-three thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars and eighty-nine cents. That's going to do it for Sunday's program and for our race week here at Gulfstream. We're on a three-day break before we return to live racing on Thursday. And we got a 10-race card on tap that begins at 1.15 p.m. Take a look at the second race. I'm going to be watching the horse named Focus on Me from the Dave Braddy Barn. Dropping down to Allowance Company. He ran in the Florida Sire Stakes unbridled division last time out and was fourth but only beat in two lengths. And it was his first time facing winners. Going to be much better spotted on Thursday and he's going to be 
be cutting back from seven to six furlongs. That's the distance at which he broke his maiden by more than seven lengths, two starts back. I'm expecting a big run from this horse and looking forward to seeing him on Thursday. I'm looking forward to seeing you all as well. See you back here in a couple days. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak.